everyone, how's it going? Today, it's my pleasure to bring you a detailed, in-depth look at the all-new 2014 SRT Viper GTS. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Viper. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big shout out and special thanks to North Point Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina for allowing me to come out and film the all-new 2014 SRT Viper GTS. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Now the Viper doesn't necessarily come with a smart key access system, but it does have a keyless entry system. So while the vehicle is locked, just keep the key fob in your pocket, and when you come up to the door, just press on the door handle, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle, and the window comes down a little bit to clear the frame. The exterior color is known as Gunmetal Pearl, featuring an all-black premium Sabelt leather interior, a part of the GTS Laguna interior package. The Viper also features a remote push button ignition by the red accented button mounted in the dash. To start, all you have to do is depress the braking clutch and hit the button to start. Amazing sound from that 8.4 liter V10. The 2014 SRT Viper features quicker ratio hydraulic assist rack and pinion power steering and a flat bottom race inspired design steering wheel wrapped in soft leather with heavy grips up top and down below and color accent stitching. Satin silver accents the multi spoke steering wheel with some modest chrome trim around the multifunction controls, SRT badging down below as well as the all new Viper logo. The standard and only transmission for the Viper is a Tremec 6-speed manual gearbox with crisp, clean shifts and now with a 12% shorter throw. In addition, you can also opt for a backup camera with guidance lines. Overall, the gearbox has been reworked to reduce shift efforts and increase precision. The shifter is directly mounted to the transmission to eliminate extra inner hardware. In addition, a shorter final drive out back now features 3.07 gear sets over the old 3.55 gears, allowing for better acceleration and a higher gear. It also helps the Viper get to his new top speed of 206 miles per hour in 6th gear rather than 5th. A limited slip differential is now also standard. Nicely accented with a leather shift knob and shift boot with contrast stitching. And we're going to flip on the automatic projector headlamps as well as the hazards. Both the windows are fully automatic as standard. And we'll go check out the exterior, shall we? The interior will also chime, letting you know it's lost detection of the proximity key fob. The all-new Viper debuted last year as a modern evolution of the classic Viper formula. Now branded under the SRT nameplate, the Viper is still unlike anything else on the road, a car that's always seemed to be in a class all its own. Originally debuted back in 1989 at the Detroit North American International Auto Show, the Viper RT-10 was an instant show success. It provided raw power with a minimal simplistic layout. The production engine was a massive, untraditional 8-liter V10 based on Chrysler's LA engine design, then commonly used in trucks. 
It was designed with collaboration from Lamborghini, a Chrysler subsidiary at the time, for a lightweight aluminum design and heavily modified internals. They produced around 400 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. The original Vipers were more of a kit car than a refined Grand Tourer. When production began for 1992, Vipers came without traction control or anti-lock brakes, nor did they have exterior door handles. In addition, the RT-10 had no side glass or a practical roof. It stayed very true to that original 1989 concept, but of course adding some safety features like roll bars, larger windshield, and more prominent mirrors. Designed in Auburn Hills, Michigan and built in Detroit, the all-new Viper for 2013-2014 embodies that classic formula while making it safer, faster, lighter, and more refined than ever. It's still a two-seater, rear-wheel drive, V10 monster with a large clamshell hood, side exhaust, and no automatic transmission, and debuts first as a fixed roof for racing purposes. There's even a newly designed Viper logo. For the first time since Viper's inception, stability control is now standard as it's mandated by law. The goal in developing the system was to create a level of assistance that would help the drivers without them noticing, in addition to a brake-based torque vectoring system that helps sharp turn-ins. Of course, stability control can always be turned off via the multi-mode system. The body is a combination of carbon fiber, aluminum, and reinforced plastics to save weight. Carbon fiber makes up the hood, roof, hatch, and door sills, while the doors are aluminum. Reinforced plastic makes up the fenders and bumpers. All in all, this saves around 100 pounds in weight or 32% in weight reduction, even with all of the extra features added. In conjunction with the chassis improvements, this helps the Viper achieve a perfect 50-50 weight distribution between the front and the rear. The double bubble roof seen in the 1996 GTS helps maximize interior space, especially for those wearing helmets. The rear glass is now flatter and inlaid into the body with a seal-free edge of glass that visually extends the greenhouse. Coefficient of drag is also down to 0.36, thanks to the wind tunnel designed body, scallops, and air ducts. Everything you see, from the air vents to the scallops and scoops, are all designed for a purpose, rather than just for show, whether to decrease drag, increase downforce, or help aid in cooling. At launch, the Viper will be available in two different models, Base and GTS. Both feature the same performance, but are geared towards two different buyers. Base cars are more minimalistic and more likely to be used on the track, keeping the purest in mind a basic interior layout with manual seats and a slightly altered body. Bi-Xenon headlamps with LED daytime running lamps now grace the front in a more aggressive sloping design. The bezels are black in the base car, while the GTS receives lighter graphite metallic bezels. The tail lamps consist of 50 LEDs each and also integrate the turn signals. On each side of the hood's center line are rows of heat extractor vents on the base Viper and are finished in black. The GTS retains larger dual extractors with the standard center-mounted cold air scoop, which allows consistent colder air to be directly taken in without mixing with the radiator. GTS models can also be had with either exposed or painted carbon fiber trim surrounding the tail lamps. Up front, brake cooling ducts painted black for the GTS, or body colored and base cars pass cool air through tubes directly to the front brakes, while outer corner vents channel the air to decrease the turbulence created by the spinning wheels. This helps reduce lift and increase high-speed stability. There's also another set of brake cooling ducts that are mounted aft to the glass in the rear pillars that help channel the air also through tubes to the rear brakes. Improvements were also made to the frame, which is now 25 pounds lighter and 50% stiffer. The fully boxed frame benefits from an all-new, stiffer structure that utilizes high-strength steels and aluminum, not to mention one-piece cast magnesium structure for the dash. This structure spans the width of the car and is one of the largest applications to date. The suspension is all aluminum with independent double wishbones front and rear which helps reduce unsprung mass, with new tow control links that help aid in more compliant understeer and oversteer. A tubular X-brace in the engine also helps aid in torsional rigidity. The front track is wider, up to 62.6 from 61.7 inches, and it's the widest yet. Not to mention the Viper also features optional two-mode adjustable aluminum Bilstein dampers with coilover springs. And for an even more track-tuned setup, you can also opt for the SRT track package for both base and GTS models. It sheds an additional 57 pounds with lighter wheels, two-piece lighter StopTech brakes, and stickier high-performance tires, making it the lightest Viper ever. The Viper can be had with a variety of wheels and finishes. This example here features the asymmetric, five-spoke polished, forged Rattler aluminum alloys measuring 18 by 10.5 inches in front and 19 by a huge 13 inches in the rear. Pirelli P0 tires are standard while stickier Corsa tires are also available, measuring 295.30 in front and 355.30 in the rear. 
Brakes consist of 14-inch, two-piece slotted and ventilated StopTech brakes on all four corners, clamped down by four piston calipers. With this setup, the Viper stops from 60 miles an hour in a very short 101 feet. Overall length is 175.7 inches with a width of 76.4 inches and a height of 49.1 inches. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is around 3,300 pounds. So let's go ahead and pop the engine cover. It's a handle located inside the fender well here. Viper fans will be happy to know that the V10 lives on. It's an all aluminum hand built 8.4 liter V10 with push rod design, two valves per cylinder and unique single cam variable valve timing system. It features a host of internal upgrades to make it lighter and more efficient with a dose of extra power. It now produces 640 horsepower at 6150 RPM and 600 pound-feet of torque at 4950 RPM. An improvement of 40 horsepower and 40 pound-feet of torque over the last Viper. With a compression ratio of 10.2 and a red line of 6250 RPM, the Viper achieves a 0-60 to 60 time of around 3.7 seconds and a top speed now of 206 miles an hour. Quarter mile times are around 11 and a half seconds at 127.3 miles an hour. Overall, the engine weighs 25 pounds less than the last gen, 17 pounds due to a retooled engine block with high strength cast aluminum, strengthened bulkheads, and cast iron bore liners. The intake manifold is now composite, which also helps aid in weight saving and decreasing the car's center of gravity. The push rods are now lighter by 10% and stiffer with forged pistons, connecting rods, and crankshaft. The exhaust valves are also lined in sodium for better cooling. Due to sodium's chemical properties, it becomes a liquid at 97.5 degrees Celsius. It then passes over the valves and helps the valves cool faster than they would otherwise. It absorbs heat faster and dissipates it faster through the cylinder heads. This prevents hot spots in the valves and combustion chambers, which would otherwise lead to engine knock. A new oil system features a swinging pickup arm within the oil pan that follows the relationship of the G-forces in tight cornering to reduce the loss of available oil from sloshing side to side. In addition, better cooling through improved water jackets for better temperature balance across the engine. Finally, thanks to new lightweight aluminum flywheel, at 21 pounds, the car revs more freely and has better acceleration response. As far as fuel economy, with a 16 gallon tank and required premium fuel, expect a miles to a gallon rating between 12 city and 19 on the highway. One of the biggest critiques of the previous generation Vipers was the interior, often fitted with subpar materials and difficult ergonomics. The all-new Viper paves the way for a bold new direction of comfort and quality never before seen in a Viper. The standard GTS features full Napa leather upholstery with pedal materials and mini panels and touch points. This Viper features the optional GTS Laguna interior package with Italian leather and sepia-toned hides that wrap the doors, dash, and center console. The unique diamond quilted pattern comes across the center portion of the doors as well as the seats. All of your power locks, power mirrors, and power windows are also located on the door, with your fuel cap release located down below in your padded storage compartment. Another thing that's great about the new Viper is the fact that they're highly customizable, with a myriad of color schemes, materials, and feature options. Each one can be made truly unique. The seats are made by Sabelle, the same manufacturer that makes seats for Ferrari. The leather is high grade with unique patterns, color accent stitching, as well as full power adjustment. The race-inspired buckets also feature better comfort and plenty of lateral support over the last generation Viper. The GTS features additional sound deadening for a quieter ride, the center console has been lowered about an inch for a more airy feeling cabin, and the seats have been designed for more travel for taller individuals. Compared to the last generation Viper, the build quality is absolutely excellent and hasn't lost a bit of the unique Viper flavor. Unique aluminum door sill plaques, aluminum sport pedals, as well as a manual tilting steering wheel, telescoping isn't currently available. The pedals are power adjust, and like I said, the dash is completely wrapped out of leather in this model. Satin silver accents many of the binnacle, speedometer trim, as well as center console and air vents. Nicely finished off with a full black headliner, composed of Alcantara. So let's go and see she sacks.
Now, the Viper features a standard 12-speaker premium audio system, but an additional option this particular one has is the 18-speaker Harman Kardon premium surround sound system with four subwoofers putting out 900 watts of musical power. Now, all of that multimedia and entertainment is fed to the newest generation of the Uconnect mobile media navigation telemetrics interface measuring 8.4 inches with touchscreen capabilities. There's also standard satellite radio as well as HD radio. Packs amazing power. Alcantara headliner, three position garage home link. Your interior illumination or reading lamps is located up top. Just activate them by pressing on them, and they're all LED. The frameless rear view mirror is also auto dimming, which is controlled via the Uconnect screen. As far as the multimedia system itself, it's probably one of the easiest and simplest systems to use on the market today. Right now, we're in our main media screen where we have our iPod, auxiliary, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, USB integration, as well as SD card input. So there's a variety of different media options depending on your particular tastes or needs. To the far left is your main radio screen where you can go between AM, FM, as well as Sirius XM satellite radio. If you hit browse, you can browse the available stations, check your presets, favorite songs, as well as check um, sports, as well as traffic and weather. Your main FM screen just shows your available stations as well as your preset options. Manual tuning in the middle. Seek scan. As well as all of your audio adjustments. Balance fade, equalizers, speed adjusted volume, as well as surround sound settings. Up top, the little map button right here allows you to dual yield the map in your media screens so you can see your radio data as well as your navigation data simultaneously. While you have the split screen, if you actually go back to media, it shows up a little bit differently. You have a few different options over here. If you click that button, it'll bring up the information for the tracks you listen to, as well as the available tracks in your playlist or CD or um, whatever media option you actually have inputted at the moment. Repeat, shuffle up top. You can click and scroll between the track, and it shows album artwork also if it's available. The controls down below here, like I said, show your auto dimming rear view mirror, as well as the vehicle settings. There's a vast amount of customization options. You can basically control every single aspect of the vehicle from this screen. It's probably one of the most customizable systems on the market. Your climate screen here where you can adjust your different zones, adjust temperature, fan speed, front and rear defrost, one touch automatic, AC and recycling. As far as your navigation, it's a Garmin based unit. So it's pretty similar functionality that you would use if you're familiar with those systems all of your destination points of interest, high-res display, also displays your um, speed limit, navigation options, show where you currently are, and going back to the main menu. You'll also notice when you're in the other screens here, it also shows your climate control, your clock, as well as outside temperature and song data. Information, you have real-time traffic updates, as well as trip and fuel data. You can also activate your settings by locating down below. Your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair it or automatically pair if it's already synced with the system. You can voice dial, store numbers in the phone book, messaging, as well as do three-way calls. It's a lot of functionality to this too and also your um, preset numbers you can also store up top. What's unique for the Viper and other SRT vehicles, on the far right, you have a lot of these functions in some of the other Chrysler Group products as well, but what you don't have, except in the SRT Group products, is the SRT Performance page. Now this is pretty neat. This is the home screen, all of the options are located to the left. If we click on timers, a lot of these are geared for obviously more track days, so you can do zero to 60, quarter mile times, break distance, save it, store them, actually send it to your friends as well. Lateral G, cornering forces. A variety of gauge packs, including your voltometer, oil temperature, and oil pressure. And the gauges 2 page is a little bit more in-depth. Engine data, including your horsepower, torque, and oil pressure. And options, you can select the picture that displays, as well as the color of the car. A very neat system. 
Sirius XM Travel Link has your real-time weather updates. You can look via map, zoom in and out. The traffic, like I showed you earlier. Fuel prices, movie listings, more detailed weather forecasts, extended, and all based on location. Not to mention sports. The vehicle settings, once again, for all the customizable options, and they're basically all stored in an app-style fashion down here. Also doubles as a 3G Wi-Fi hotspot, and you can also load up custom apps as well. There's also SOS Emergency Roadside Assistance. Taking a look down the center console, all the air vents are accented in satin silver, and the satin silver trend also carries on to the center console here. The radio and multimedia system climate controls are accented in high gloss black veneer. Your volume here, tune, seek, scroll, turning the screen off. If you didn't want it on, back button, your hazards in the middle like you saw earlier, as well as simple climate control adjustments down below if you just wanted some basic control over it and not have to use the Uconnect system. So you have your fan speed in the middle, one touch automatic, temperature in front and rear defrost. Down below are the two mode driver adjustable Bilstein dampers a part of the GTS package for race and street. And it all shows up in the speedometer cluster as well, which one you have selected. As we continue back, Leather accented e-brake, two cup holders, and a little bit of storage, and all of your media inputs are located in the back. SD card, iPod, auxiliary, as well as USB. There's also a 12 volt power outlet and a little bit of storage. The leather and color accenting comes up the middle here with the GTS logo and a nice size storage pocket. You also have Viper inscripted right above the grip handle. Also nice and open to the cargo area. As far as the steering wheel, on the right hand side you have your cruise control, as well as settings for the electronic stability control and activation of your launch control. It all shows up in the thin film transistor liquid crystal display. You also have the ability to completely turn off stability control, of course, while you're on a track. As in typical Chrysler Group fashion, the radio controls are located on the back including going through your presets and selecting the various radio stations. To the left hand side is your hands-free telephone as well as voice commands. Help. To play music, include the type, which can be song, artist, album, genre, playlist, audiobook, or podcast. Say things like, play song, Maple Leaf Rag, play artist, Scott Joplin, or play track 5. You can interrupt this help message by pressing the voice button. For radio, you... Cancel. Cancelled. The voice recognition system has also been improved over the past couple years with a much more pleasant voice to listen to. And right below that is your integrated driver information system. It's also located in the reconfigurable display. So right now we're on our standard tachometer change between miles per hour and kilometers, tire pressure monitoring system as well as other vehicle data. A lot of the same stuff you'll see in the SRT screen, fuel economy, trip computer, media options, your messages like service reminders and things of that nature, as well as settings for the screen. Not to mention the SRT performance screen for lap times. Vehicle diagnostics, as well as a hibernation mode for the vehicle. It allows the vehicle to be stored for extended period of times like over winter without excessive battery drain. The speedometer, as well as vehicle fuel off to the far right are traditional analog gauges, but all of these in the middle are totally reconfigurable as you saw earlier. You probably also noticed during the exhaust portion as well, when you actually rev the vehicle, it puts a little tick mark where the RPM was that it stopped, just momentarily. It's a pretty neat um, little styling cue. The last vehicle I saw in on was a Lexus LFA. Your wipers are located off to the left and your turn signal and high beam stock. But all in all, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna shut her down.
and we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now the new Viper does have some pretty usable cargo space in the back for this particular vehicle class. It's around 14.6 cubic feet and it's also lined in soft plush carpet. As it gets shallower towards the front, there is a deep storage well out back with a side storage pocket to the right and an air compressor off to the left. Not to mention LED illumination so you can more easily see at night. As you look towards the top, you'll see the rear deck lid with the exposed carbon fiber like I touched on earlier. You also have the same power adjustments on the passenger seat that you find on the drivers. unique GTS plaque located on the passenger side of the dash, as well as an electronically actuated glove box. What's nice too, all of the lower panels are also nicely padded. It's such a definite improvement over the previous generation Viper. The glove box, nice size, so with some illumination and lined in felt. The Viper nameplate is a legend all its own. With improved performance, capabilities and safety, not to mention build, it perfects the original concept without losing that signature Viper flavor. A vehicle that's hard to compare, it's not necessarily a sports car or an exotic, and it's certainly not a Grand Tourer. But one thing we know for certain, it doesn't have to be. It's a Viper. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed, in-depth look at the all-new 2014 SRT Viper GTS. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.